welcome to this segment of Community Talk. I'm Bobby Donaldson, and here today with me is Karen Staples. Hi. And um, I had it shared with me recently in the mall while walking through a store that I'm the old nursing home lady. <laughs> and I stood there a minute, and I said to the lady who said that, you know, yes, I am. I can tell you that 55 years ago, I started working in the nursing homes as a teenager, and I thought it was the worst thing that ever happened to me in my life. And today I realize that it was God's plan for me and this work has blessed my life forever. Karen is kind of my soulmate in this because uh, she was one of the best children I ever saw take care of her mother and her grandmother before that. And she's worked a long time with me in this industry. But today we're gonna talk to you about uh, something we wanna do mm -hmm. for everybody. Uh, that we hope's a good thing. We've prayed over it and worked on it, and, and uh, it's called the Care Journey Support Group. Um, it's going to meet for the first time March the 29th at Senior Life Network in the Mo Oakwood Mall in the back. There'll be some kind of light mm -hmm. snack, and um, we're just going to love, comfort, and share information with each other. How, what, how, what are we going to do? <laughs> well, you know, so often when people start this journey, and they can do it from a variety of, of directions, you can be a spouse, you can be a parent, God forbid, you can be a child, or you can have a friend, but someone, either yourself or someone in your family or some loved one, needs more care than they can receive at home. And that journey is difficult. Uh, it's scary. It's unknown to most people. Most people don't even know where to start with it. But usually they have become the caregiver. Yeah. And when you become the caregiver, unfortunately for so many people, you also become the target of the person who needs that care. They're angry and they're upset and they're hurt and they don't know which way to turn and they're scared. And they take it out on their caregiver. Well, when the daughter or the spouse or the mother becomes the caregiver, then you're the target for that. And you cease to be the wife or and the daughter. And you have that whole emotional garbage. Yes, you of, do. Although you know it's a disease and you know it's a journey, part of it is just hurtful. That's right. And a lot of times they don't know where to turn to for support. But if they can find the right place and the right time, then you get to go back to being the mother, the wife, the daughter. Well, and we're talking about people who have someone being cared for in a facility. Yep. Nursing home facility, assisted living facility, uh, even sometimes independent living mm -hmm. with a lot of support. But they've left their own home. Right. And I can tell you, uh, like I said, I have, I have worked in this industry a very long time. And many, many years ago, I had occasion to need to put one of my parents in a nursing home, only for a window of time for skilled nursing. And these people that were going to care for him were people I personally had hired. Mm -hmm. They were my friends and they were my loved ones. And when I got that day ended and it was time for me to go home, I sat in that car for hours. I could not leave that parking lot. Right. And at that time, I think that journey was for me to realize what it's like for the other guy on the other side of the table. That Very was not true. an experience I'd ever had. But this whole group is, is meant for us to just come together mm -hmm. and me to get to tell you that story and what we did with it. And maybe if you've been on this journey and you want to come to the support group and speak with someone who's struggling because what's the one thing that most of them have promised? That they'd never do that. <laughs> yeah. I, I'll never, I promised Mom I'd never put her in yep. the nursing home. Well, today I want to say to you, and I love you, <laughs> don't do that. No. Promise Mama that you will always take care of her. Right. If, always be there. And, and I have to tell you, we're a family who had enough people. We had enough resources. We certainly were able to take care of Mama. But her particular illness had a pain issue that we could not manage. So you would ne I would have never said to Mama, I promise you, no matter how much pain you're in, I won't let you right. go somewhere. But... What I, when I said, I'll never put you there, that's kind of what I said. So um, I just think that uh, it's, it's a chance for those of us who've been on this journey to know those who 
are just going on it, yeah. or if you're still doing this at home and you're fine right now, or even if you think, someday I wonder, how am I going to stand at the foot of that hospital bed and say, Mama, the doctor said you can't go home. Mm -hmm. Say, Daddy, you can't live out here on the farm all by yourself anymore. Here's, here's the worst one. This is going to be mine is the day that we say you can't drive anymore. Because mm -hmm. anybody who knows me knows I just love to drive everywhere. <laughs> I'm, I'm like the Sonic's number one customer. They're like, here she comes again. So, and, and maybe somebody told that in a way or learned from their mistake. And right. so this is just, we're going to come together once a month for an hour and give people with knowledge of this journey or people with questions of this to come together. Nobody's gonna sell you nothing. Nope. Nobody's gonna market to you anything. We are simply just gonna try to love one another and, and be on this journey. Be supportive. Uh, I had this passion for a long time that I, I have such great stories and I, I actually am working on a book because that. But one of my favorite things ever was uh, the lessons that I have learned mm -hmm. because the people I've been allowed to care for over the years have taught me amazing things. My favorite story of, like this is I went to work one morning and I worked in a facility that was brand new and huge and beautiful and the rooms were big and everybody had their own private bathroom. Gorgeous facility. Yep. And I'm running late because of some holdups at home in my personal life. And I park and I get in and it's like 10 after 8 and they're sitting waiting for me is Polly. Now Polly gets her hair done about 3 o'clock in the afternoon every Tuesday. But at 8 o'clock she's at my office to get her money to pay her hairdresser because we are caring for a generation of people who pay their bills right yep. then. Okay. So I said to her, oh Miss Polly, I'm so sorry. I was running late and my husband left his clothes on the floor and I had to pick up his dirty clothes. He snored all night and I didn't get enough sleep and I'm just late and I'm so sorry. And she said to me, you know, Miss Bobby, I was married 67 years and now I'm here and you're good to me and that room is beautiful and I lay in that big old bed every night and I think about when my husband snored and I'd give all I own to hear that one more time. And that has been it was 1994, so what's that, 24 years ago. But last night when I went to bed and my husband started that little snore, it was my blessing. And Miss Polly, who's been gone a long time, gave yeah. that gift to me. And I have a thousand stories like that where they taught me about the little things that used to just irritate me until. So if someone is right now, they tell me one of the hardest things is at nighttime when you get into that bed that you've always shared with somebody. So if you want to come and just have somebody else, know that somebody else is going through that mm -hmm. too, and maybe that we love each other. Does that, did I tell them this well? I, I think so. I think part of it is just a place to ask the question where you don't feel like, you know, that someone's going to judge you for it. It's a place where you can ask questions, you can get answers, you can receive support, but mainly you're just going to get a lot of love. Yeah. And we are not there. We're not a gripe session. We're not there nope. for you to tell us what whoever's working for you right now is doing wrong. Nope. <laughs> uh, we are certainly not there to solicit business or that. But if you have someone at home still, or if you have someone who's starting to fall or having repeat hospital visits, there would be some general information about skilled nursing is great because if they mm -hmm. have an issue and they can get better, they can come to us with some financial and other support and we can tell you how all that works and then go back home. Um, things like benefits from the veterans, benefits through the DHS mm -hmm. Medicaid system, those kind of things we would answer. But the 29th of March, this at six o'clock at Oakwood Mall in the Senior Life network office we're going to have our first meeting i'd love for you to come if you're on this journey or want to hear what we have to say <laughs> the first program is actually me it's only 10 minutes long but it's about what are great gifts for people who've went from their home to this small area of a picture frame that won't break i have a writing book with the tools that make them able to make a note 
um, things that over the years some family, not me, but some loving family has done, and I kept a list, and now my list is wonderful. Yeah. But I know uh, with Karen, when her grandmother was with me, there were some, you had to pick really small because of the space, even though mm -hmm. it was a large room. But there was a little table that came from her home, and that table was like, she had polished it, and she had set her things on it, and now it was in her room. And it, it's a journey. Does it that, is. Does that make sense? Yeah. And a precious journey. It is a precious journey, <laughs> and we're honored to be on it. Yes, we are. And uh, my children say that when God looks down and says, who wants to go, I say, pick me, pick me. <laughs> and I have been blessed with, with this loving, caring woman and uh, uh, this amazing family. Um, we agree that on any given day, we take turns which family's craziest. True. Yeah. <laughs> but on all days, we both love our families. Yes, we do. So please know if uh, you're going to see some flyers around. Mm -hmm. uh, and we invite, and when people come and they say something at this meeting, that we might go out and try to find someone with that knowledge for the next meeting. Uh, how do you get hospital beds? How do you get, right. you know, what kind of clothes do you buy? There are those specialty, what is that called? Where they... Right. And, and if we don't have the answer, uh -huh. we'll find it. Yeah. And we'll give you direction of where to find it. Yeah. So. It, it's, like I said, it's not meant to sell you anything. It's not going anywhere. No. Uh, it's, our, it's our gift to ourselves to take what we've learned for all these yeah. years and give Share it back. It with others. To, yeah. Because people who are gone now helped us. Yes, I mean, did. you know, uh, I know your Miss Donna was amazing to yes. us, and, and the Croker family was wonderful to us. They were. And uh, the Osteopathic Foundation, when the hospital was mm -hmm. here, is where I kind of got started, right. you know. And, and uh, so I look back at those people and how the love they did it with. And, and I know that there is a side of it that's a business, and there are rules and meds and doctors, right. and, but we're about the part of it where the heart just hurts. That's right. And uh, the care and the caring. Yeah. And the compassion. Well, it's and an important part of it. And we want so important. I see how much your children care for you. Mm -hmm. And I think part of that is they saw you take care of your mother mm -hmm. and they saw her take care of her, you know. And uh, it's a circle. The, it the light, the, you know, there's a circle. And uh, so if, if this is something that touches your life or may touch your life, mm -hmm. Please come see us March the 29th, 6 p.m., Senior Life Network, Oatwood Mall. It is just an independent thing. It's not sponsored by any group. All of the care facilities in town have supported and been lovely to That's me. Exactly. So I got to tell you, it, it, um, we just, I just feel like it's a thing whose time has come. That's right. It's a gift. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't want to do it by myself, so my... Sweet, gracious friend said, I'll help you. And so I said, okay. We'll try. <laughs> and to all of you who've ever shared a loved one with us, we'd like to thank you for that share. Thank you. Hi, I'm Brenda Bingham, Blue Star Mother President, Chapter 11, Enid, Oklahoma. We are a 501c3. We send care packages to our troops. And we take donations, and we're at the Oakwood Mall between the Cookie Company and Dillard's. Stop by, say hi, or drop off a donation. We appreciate all that you do. Thank you, and come watch us on Community Talk. Hello and welcome to another edition of Community Talk and I'm Dan Scheidel, the Executive Director of the United Way, but we're here talking about the Garfield County Child Advocacy Center and uh, the council, excuse me, and we're uh, here with Miss Carol Wade who is the CEO and uh, Chief Operating Officer that works at uh, the uh, 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 council. So thank you so much for being here and we're here to talk about a Child Abuse Prevention Month. Yes, right? Yeah. right. And of course, you might want to know who this lovely little uh, wooden child is. We'll get to that in a minute. But okay. before we do, um, let's talk a little bit about why we're here. We want to talk about March is uh, Child Abuse uh, Prevention Actually, it's Month. April. 
right? Oh, April. it's in April. April. Yes, uh -huh. but months, lead, months, uh, the March leading up is, to that is where she comes that's in. That's where she leading comes up in. To April. Right. Yeah. Okay. So okay. Let, let's talk about March and why we're doing the uh, Wooden Children Project. Let's talk about that project and how it got started. Some okay. of the history behind it. Um, in the past, we've done, we've put pinwheels out places, people put blue ribbons on trees, just to give people some idea, a visual idea of what child abuse looks like in their community, as far as numbers go. And a long time ago, there was, I heard about this project in Kansas, and I wrote and got some information about it, and it sat in a file for years. And finally, in 97, no, 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 I take that back, it wasn't, it was 2013. Yeah, that was your first uh, one. We finally like, got it started, and we had, and we had people actually cut out these wooden silhouettes, mm. and then we painted them, and then other people came in and painted the faces, and faces and all that, and uh, then we came up with the idea of having them fostered, uh, meaning somebody actually gives us twenty-five dollars, and they take this little wooden thing home, and they dress it and they keep it at their house or in their place of business or something and then on the day that we ask them they bring it back to the courthouse yard and uh, the first year we did it we had 97 of them and we thought we really really had done a, a big thing and and we had because we did all that painting and everything ourselves mm -hmm. by the next year we were we ha it had increased to almost 200, and then oh. we knew we had to do something else. It increased to 200? Yes. Okay. Right. right. And the highest we've gone in these five years is 355 kids. That's a lot. And uh, we did. And then we started asking for help to cut them out. Um, the Votech school classes have helped cut them out. Uh, Vance Air Force pilots have. A man had a workshop in his garage and he did all the cutting and then we took him to Mike Humphrey who is now our professional painter and we have various colors of skin and then we started asking artists to paint faces. Oh neat. Some of the artists were high school classes, mm -hmm. some of them were the arts council people, some of them were staff, some of them were just kids that wanted to try painting. Well, that is really neat. Yeah. So, so this last year there were uh, 246. Is that correct? This year there are 246. Year. Okay. Last year there okay. were 241. Oh, okay. So we've increased a little bit. Five. Five. Right. Okay. And, and so, but you know, that's that's not a, a large number. In fact, I was doing some checking. We had 1,048 referrals, and of in this county, in this. And out of those referrals, then, 246 were confirmed. 200 of them are neglect cases. 46 are either abuse or both, neglect so, and so abuse. So the neglect cases, are they then um, in foster care? Could be. Okay. Um, and probably are, okay. depending on the degree of neglect. And, you know, that will get us into talking about all the different kinds of cases. In the, sure. And, yeah. and that, that's a whole other topic okay. for a, another day. But that means if we have a population approximately 63,000 something in this county. 25% of them are children under 18. Mm -hmm. So we have what it looks like about 15.2 children per 1,000 are in this 246. Gotcha. So, okay, so for the viewers out there, if they want to adopt... Foster. Foster, excuse uh -huh. me, not adopt. No, you can't keep them. <laughs> foster, because you do have to give them back, yes. right? Yes, uh -huh. uh, If they want to foster, again, um, what is it that they have to do in order to foster one they of have these? To Call our, our office uh -huh. at 242-1153. Okay. Tell us they want one. And the person will ask them, what would they like to have on the tag? And it says on the tag, I pledged or we pledge to prevent child abuse. And then the name goes on it. If it's the, oh, the Scheidel family or whatever can be put right on there. And then that's pinned to whatever kind of clothes 
the family chooses to put on the doll. Okay, so the dolls come uh, without clothing. Ab absolutely. So they, they have to either get the clothing from Park Avenue or yes. Salvation Army. That's or what something. we'd suggest. That, well, that's what we yeah. did last year right. with the United Because her so. whole outfit is, is designer, but it costs less than $2. Ooh, designer. Ooh, yeah, ooh, right. Really and it matches and everything. and <laughs> Less than $2. So, and it's going for a good cause, yeah, too, the $2. Yeah. Okay, and so it, it, the actual expense to the individual is $25 per child, uh -huh. right? And okay. whatever it costs to dress her oh, or okay. him. Great. And him or uh, her. So. Him okay. or her, mm -hmm. yes. And uh, pick them up at the office on the 14th of March, and you take them and dress them and keep them at your house. Some people put them in their front yard because it's. it also a has other people then ask, what's that thing doing in your front yard? And then you talk to them about preventing child abuse. Or okay. if it's a business, they put them in their windows, and the same, same and so thing. So they, they keep them for a couple of weeks? They keep around. them until the 30th of March okay. this year, because um, April 1st actually is a Sunday. It's Easter Sunday. Right. And uh, so we couldn't be there putting them out on, on Sunday, and we didn't want to be. Sure. So we're doing this on Friday. But oh, then okay. they bring them to the courthouse yard. And in the meantime... Isn't that a good Friday? It is. <laughs> yes, Well, that's I'm good, sorry. though. I mean, it is. doing good on a good Friday. Yeah, huh? right. That's, that's a good thing. Okay. And, uh, and then, in the meantime, people have come there and put pieces of rebar in the ground. I mean, she's standing on a pedestal or an easel. There'll be rebar stuck in the ground, and she has little brackets behind her. Oh, yeah, there's some brackets behind her. So there. she okay. stands up. Yeah. So you just slide it on the right. rebar pole and right. it stands there. Yeah. And we have uh, Terry Mote and some of the Micronesian Coalition is going to do the rebar for oh, us. Oh, good. Um, I think my husband's supposed to help, too, if he remembers. <laughs> and uh, then he, they will put the rebar in the ground. Uh, then people bring the kids and put them there. Uh, when this is finished, and May 1st, we've promised the county commissioners will have them out of the yard by May 1st. Okay, so they'll be they'll be on the courthouse lawn for all the month, the month of, of April. April. Mm -hmm. So that'll bring awareness to everyone in the community about um, uh, yeah. child abuse. You know, I and it was because of the United Way application that I did this. Um, but I talked to the city about how many people pass that corner on what is it, Randolph and Grand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, 10,000 people wow. passed that. Well, they figured that... Well, that's 10,000 cars. Well, cars, well, yes. And if you have right. two or three or four people right. in the car, that's that could be quite a few people. But they also said that it ended up to be something like 300,000 people will see these little people standing there. Yeah, because there's a lot of people that walk by. Yes. There's a lot of people that drive uh, yeah. down to the post office. And, and I even uh, called them back and said, are you sure? And, yeah. and they said, yeah, they were sure. Wow. So that there, I don't think we could have come up with a better visual. Yeah. Because in and you probably haven't seen it yet since you're new to the community. No, I, I got here just in time last year. Oh, did you? And the United Way actually uh, uh, sponsored four. Uh huh. And so we're we're going to do that again Good. this year. Thank so, you. Well, you bet. It's it's a it's a great way to um, uh, really build awareness. And I think if people would, you know, just when they drive by, they understand that it's got something to do with children. Uh, and, and so this is a good way to you know, build that awareness about child abuse in our community and, and how people might get involved. And again, if they want to foster one of these, we want them to call 242-1153. Correct. 242-1153. And, and do um, it soon. And do it soon because they go fast. Because we are over halfway right? finished. I mean, we, count ours we have, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay. But we have over half of them fostered. But the other thing it does is it gets other community people involved. Like there are kids from Chisholm School that are going to come and help bring them back to the office once the, the event is over. Um, uh, there's one fire department unit that always helps us with the kid, either putting yeah. up the rebar or something. Terry's group helping to put up the rebar. Lots of people involved in people this, in and community. every time somebody does that, and they they actually connect with these little, little creatures, they say they they understand more what child abuse prevention yeah. is about. Well, that's 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 great because we can get community uh, groups yeah. involved, and so that they can actually help with building awareness as well. Yes. So not only in their yes. groups, but our our community, because yes. they'll take that out and speak to the community. So uh, if they want to foster, they can foster in 
their names, their grandchildren's name, children, Or they their don't business. have to put a name at all. Some right. people put anonymous. We do have a business, though, that has made little shirts that are, that advertise their business. Oh, really? And they're in this size. Oh, so they can do oh, that the, as well? Yes, yes. Or little t-shirts. Yes. Yeah. Now, the size of clothes we probably should mention. Three toddler clothes fit them just right. And right. if they're real stretchy, you can squeeze them into two toddler but remember, they're wooden. They don't bend. Right. That's, yeah. I noticed that last year because I was trying to put a shirt on one of <laughs> one of the kids, and it was difficult. Mm -hmm. And Carolina was giving me a hard time, but I got the, uh, I think the top too small. So you got to make sure you get the right size. My uh, granddaughter kids, insisted so. one year we put tights on this thing, okay. and we did. <laughs> you did only once. Okay. Um, again, let's let's go over the dates. So yes. March fourteenth. Between will, nine and four. They'll That's pick them up. Pick mm -hmm. up the children. Right. And will that be at, at your place then? Yes, at okay. the Yellow House. Yellow House. And there will be people there all day. The Yellow House is uh, on the corner of... 10th and East Broadway. 10th and East Broadway. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that, Carol. And again, we want to thank you so much for all that you do in our community. Oh, and I enjoy it. You do a super job. Now, this is the sixth year of the project. Is that yes, correct? Yes, I believe Six so. year of the project. Right. So uh, this is the Wooden Children 2018. And uh, we're uh, looking at 246 of these little kids that will be on the courthouse lawn. And you can help by calling that number on the screen, 242-1153. And again, talking to either Carol or Megan or Sarah, Sarah, uh, someone, Sheila. Usually, someone's <laughs> Sheila's always in there. charge this year. Sheila's in charge. Yeah. Don't forget that. Yeah. So, okay. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's unfortunate, but it's uh, one of the things that uh, is great about our community is that we have so many people out in our community that are so uh, concerned about our children. And of course, uh, early childhood um, and you know, kids that, that this is so detrimental to their uh, upbringing. And it's uh, one of those adverse childhood experiences mm -hmm. that kids have that we wanna, we wanna continue to reduce. And the only way we can do that is to build awareness right and to provide education and get people involved. So. And we know it happens, yeah. so our role is to report it. Right. And so if you Good have point. any reason to believe a child's being abused or neglected, there's an 800 number to call. Do you want that too? Yes, please. Yeah, it's 1-800-522-3511. And, and that number, where does that go to? Is Oklahoma that a hotline? Oklahoma City hotline, okay. and it covers the entire state. It covers all the state. Then they'll do the screening of the thing and send it back to our county for investigation. Is that, is that an abuse hotline? For just child abuse. Just for children. Okay, just for children. Again, mm -hmm. that number, you want to hit it 1 800 3511. Great. Well, thank you, Carol. And again, the number to call if you'd like to get one of the, the kids uh, is uh, 580 242 1153. So thank you again, Carol, for all you You're do. You're welcome. And, uh, everything Thanks for that, talking uh, to you me. You bet. No, it's my pleasure. And for meeting her, too. Yes, all right. <laughs> and we'll, uh, we'll get some of those kids, and I'll make sure that. Um, the United Way is sponsoring some of those, so Thanks. we'll do that. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. Uh, please stay tuned. There's a lot uh, more great information about our community. Uh, don't want you to miss it. Stay tuned for another one on Community Talk. Hi, I'm Lisa Magyar with Creative Arts Enid. Find us on Facebook and our website, creativeartsenid.com. We're at 222 East Maple. Come get creative with us and watch for us on Community Talk. Hi, welcome to Community Talk. I'm Bethany Gill with the Enid Public Library. I'm here with Peggy Chambers from the Enid Writers Club. We're here to talk to you about the 2018 Enid Author Fest coming up Saturday, March 3rd from 1 to 5 p.m. Hi, Peggy. Hi, Bethany. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm, I'm excited about this. So how much effort has gone into putting this together? We've been working on it for several months. Uh, we worked on it all last year and then again some this starting in the fall. And the Enid Writers Club is helping out along with Friends of the Library and the Enid Public Library and hope to have a, a good group. Excellent. I understand that this isn't the first year this has happened. This is going to be the second consecutive year that It'll we've done this. It'll be the second and we're hoping to have many, many more. Excellent. Um, do you have any authors that you're particularly excited about? I think all of the Oklahoma 
Texas, Kansas authors, Arkansas. We have several coming, uh, over 40 from all around the state. Oh, that's exciting. Mm -hmm. It's very exciting. Um, I know Tammy Sawyer, who is a child's author, mm -hmm. is going to be here. Okay. And that's, um, can you tell me a little bit about her? I really do not know Tammy Sawyer, but I do know that she is going to be on the panel and, and doing and maybe re doing some reading from her book. Yes. Which will be exciting. Um, I know the day is going to be broken down in between panel discussions mm -hmm. and author readings. Mm -hmm. um, can you give us a little bit of information about that, like how it's supposed to flow? We will have panel discussions with the adult authors that write adult fiction and nonfiction, and then we'll have some readings through young adult and uh, children's authors, and they're all going to take place upstairs in the Great Plains room. They will have the other authors will be downstairs at their table selling their books, greeting people, talking to people. It'll be a lot of fun, a lot of things going on. Yes, I think there will be something for everyone. Mm -hmm. Um, you're also going to be one of the featured authors. I'll be there. Um, what book are you going to be promoting? Uh, my new book is called Stones of Sand Hill Island, and it's a sequel. It is part of the Sand Hill Island series, and it just came out this January. Very exciting. Congratulations. Thank you. How long have you been an author? Oh, well, written author probably 10 years. Very exciting. Mm -hmm. And you're also president of the Enid Writers Club. I am. Um, give us some information about that. The Writers Club was formed in 1923 at, wow. out at Phillips University by Professor R.J. Wolfinger. It's the oldest writing club in Oklahoma. And uh, we are an affiliate of the Oklahoma Writers Federation, Inc., which is, uh, takes place in Oklahoma City. It's all encompassing Oklahoma, Kansas, Arkansas, Texas. Um, we have a conference once a year, and it's coming up in May, and it's a big deal. It's, this is their 50th year. And oh, that's exciting. We have three days worth of hobnobbing with publishers and editors and authors, and it's a lot of fun. Very exciting. What does it take to join your club? Our club will take uh, anyone from any age group, any uh, skill level. We ask that you just enjoy writing and want to improve your skills. We have a... Uh, contest once a month, which is 150 words of a specific um, subject, and then the people will, everyone reads theirs out loud, and we have a traveling trophy that goes around. Oh, that's fun. And we have programs from other authors and publishers and that sort of thing that come and talk to us. Very exciting. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. And thank you for joining Community Talk. Mitchell, the executive director with the For Our Kids Foundation, whose mission is to provide support to children and adults with disabilities. Please look for us on Community Talk.